Well, hello YouTube! In this video, we're going to look at something a little bit fishy going on in the VVHQ. Uh, but before we get to that, let's go over to the main screen so we can see what's going on in the world of crypto and NFTs and all of that kind of fun stuff today. Uh, so we start off with this, uh, and then it's this. I spent a load of time doing this, and hardly anyone's watched it. So, <laughs> And it's all for you guys, honestly, um, because this is basically a... Uh, a video all about the latest hacks and latest scams that are going on in the crypto world. So if you haven't had a chance to watch it, I will leave it at the end of this video. Obviously, it's not about VV per se. However, if you own Omi and you put Omi in your MetaMask, for example, then it kind of is about you as well because it's basically talking about the different hacks and the different uh, you know scams that can be going on. That some of them that I've fallen for, some of them have happened to me that I haven't fallen for, luckily, and just ways you can avoid them basically. Uh, and it all comes down to, I guess. Uh, with this new uh, Aurex wallet, because at the end of the day, the Aurex wallet, it does a transaction simulation on everything you do, so that therefore you can't get caught up in these scams that, you know, still apes every single day and all these other massively priced NFTs that it's just absolutely crazy. But anyway, I digress. Uh, if you want to watch that video, uh, spent a lot of time on it, you know, trying to get it right and do some nice stuff with it all over Christmas period. So if you want to watch that, then feel free to do that. Uh, and that'll be on the channel. Uh, but let's get back to the main VV news, shall we? So we can see what's going on. Uh, and that is this. Uh, I help societies, one of the VVOGs, uh, hint Pokemon when cash out isn't working and it's a closed ecosystem. He's completely right on this one, isn't he? Um, somebody, I think it was Crypto Show 84 if you haven't checked out his channel, great channel. I'll leave his details in the comments below. Um, he does a lot of deep dives on stuff, but uh, he put out just a Twitter post saying something like, uh, what is not on VV that you want to collect or something along them lines. I can't remember what it was and David Yu answered back with Pokemon. So therefore, then it starts people going a bit crazy isn't it? And Alex got a bit crazy in the comments as well. But um, I help society, although he's, he's saying this in like kind of a sarcastic way, I suppose he's kind of right as well because he's hinting about Pokemon when actually now the cash out has been taken away, hasn't it? Essentially, Wire has is going bust or has gone bust or is filing for bankruptcy. Don't know the exact details of it, but they're no longer going to be Vivi's cash out partner. So that means we no longer have cash out at all. Now, is this a bad thing? Uh, yes and no. It's bad, I suppose, from the point of view of people looking at it once again, saying, hey, you know, I can't cash out anymore. But it's really, really good for the market. And I'll tell you why. Because do you remember uh, when there was a massive sort of bull run on all of the collectibles? And the reason that bull run happened, or majority of the reason that bull run happened, probably, is because of the trickle-down effect. Because I don't know about you, but I'm very very bad at keeping gems in my wallet. If I see something that I like, like say I see Robocop and I think, oh, I want to get that, I will get it. However, if I know that I can take that money out and spend it on something else, I'm probably not going to sit on that money. So basically what happens with the trickle down effect is that for instance, there's a big drop of some kind, uh, like let, let's just say Robocop for example, because it was just now. And then what happens is that people buy that drop and then other people who've got gems then buy that which then gives those people gems. And then those people who've got those gems wouldn't usually cash out. They would go, oh, okay, right, I've got 500 in my account now, I'll cash out. But instead they can't, because there's no way to cash out at the moment. So what ends up happening is that they sit on those gems. And most people don't have patience. They really don't, I didn't. I cashed out a, a Superman uh, for about three and a half thousand, or no, 3,000, I think, or 3,100. I can't remember what it was exactly, but I cashed out a Superman. OK, and I got 3000 on gems in my account and I sat on them for about two weeks and then I could not do anything else. I was like rationalizing in my mind. OK, well, maybe if I just buy this collectible or that collectible, then maybe that will go up and blah, blah, blah. And I basically spend all of my gems that I got for my Superman on other collectibles because it's the trickle down effect. So basically, when you can't cash out, you've got nothing to do with those gems. It seems like play money, not real money. It's very hard to, to do anything with them, especially now, as even though they bought in the cash out before, um, remember, when they bought in that cash out, they stopped all off-market transactions as well. Uh, and a lot of people, like I Help Society, who was helping people out by giving them gems and stuff like that. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of it and the backstory of it, so I'm not going to go into that. But the point is that he is now banned. So, therefore, for that reason, or he's, he's banned from Twitter, at least. He's been, uh, you know, uh, not banned from Twitter, but, but um, blocked on Twitter by Vivi, I believe. 
Now, I'm not sure if he's had his account restricted or not. I think he might have done. Um, so, but then that's all at their end. That's all their security issues. That's what they have to deal with. But the point is that what I'm getting at is that he was helping people with off-market transactions. If you wanted to cash out, you could go to him and say this. He would then buy it off you, give you gems, etc., etc. That was the way to do it. Now, you can't even do any of that and you can't even cash out. So that means that you're gonna have them gems sitting in your thing for however long it takes them. Now, the good news is that because it was mainly the MTL, which was the legal battle that they were actually trying to get sorted, the actual wire thing that they got sorted in the end, they can probably just stick in another crypto provider very quickly because they don't have to worry about the MTL and all that kind of stuff. Or maybe they do, maybe they have to change some names over and change some things over, but either way, they've essentially got the permission already. Now, do we have to re-KYC, I wonder, because it's a new platform? I don't know. So we will find out all that information from Vivi themselves, but I see it as kind of a good thing in a way, and I believe the market has even started trundling up just a little bit. So maybe we'll see a little bull run on these collectibles um, and bear in mind that this will be a bull run from people coming in new as well uh, but also a bull run from the people who basically sold huge amounts of stuff and then they're just sitting on those gems and they can't do anything with them so therefore uh, it's an interesting concept I wonder if there's going to be a uh, you know a lot of um, difference in the market I don't know for sure, can't say for sure, but I will say it will definitely have an effect without a doubt. So in essence, the longer it takes for them to change over the provider, the better it is for the people who are holding the collectibles, especially if you just want to get out, because you know the money's going to come back in. Sooner or later, you know that they're going to fit in a transfer thing sooner or later, but it's just whether you've got the patience to hold on. So therefore, if you've got that patience, you could sell some of your collectibles at a higher rate and then just hold on. Or you could even sell those collectibles while the ball runs on, and then when it drops again, you could buy other ones to your liking. So, you know, there's lots of things and lots of advantages you can take of, of this. And, uh, you know, let me know what you think in the comments and if you're doing the same thing. So next up is this. This is the thing that we're talking about today. What the heck is going on? Uh, this guy here, Mr. Vivi, Vivi Meister, is that? Or Vivi Mr. V? I'm not sure. I think it's Mr. V. Vivi underscore Mr. V on Twitter. Feel free to follow them on Twitter. Uh, they put up, what the heck is going on here? I bought two of the same collectible from this person who somehow got two special mints from the store. Look at their history. So this is the person they're talking about. And then if you look here, you can see that Javier Torres uh, actually did a, um, a little thing on this now incidentally I did do a video uh, you probably noticed there hasn't been any videos from me for quite a while well, there was a video but I took it down and I'll tell you for why now now Javier Torres contacted me and he was talking about the gold logos and stuff and he showed me his research on the gold logos and it seemed like some of the team had been receiving those gold logos and then selling them on uh, which we didn't think was great and we were basically explaining about it in the in the video or I was explaining about his research in the video but then someone pointed out to me which is very true that even though it looks like they sold them you can't actually prove they sold them all you can prove is that they were transferred so therefore it's highly possible that somebody uh, that the VV wallet gifted them to Dan or gave them to Dan to then gift them on to other people now, why that would be the case, I don't know, because you would think that if that was the case, they would just go straight from the VV wallet straight to, you know, somebody else. But, you know, it's possible that happened as well. So, therefore, I took the video down. I didn't want to be seen as fudding or anything like that. Um, but one of the things we were talking about there is the fact that you can obviously track the wallets. And this is something that Javier Torres does very well. Um, and you can see here, this is some of the low mints that he's been tracking. And we're trying to figure out why this one person has so many low and special mints mints. As you can see, they've got, uh, you know, all the specials there. They've got 888 to 666, uh, a 1234, a 2222, uh, you know, a 13,000. All of these are kind of special mints to people. And the rest of them are really, really low mints. And this is just from one wallet. So the whole thing is, uh, how is Vivi going to explain this one? Well, if I was looking at this personally, um, I've got a theory about why it's happening like this. So I'll tell you that theory right now. Well, first of all, um, there is a possibility that they've got something that obviously takes the mint away before it gets sold. But I don't think that's the case. I've got a feeling that basically what happens is that Vivi keep back the, uh, the, the amount that they keep back originally. And then they keep back another lot of them, don't they? Because of the fact that then they give them out to, you know, staff and all that kind of thing. Um, incidentally, that was something that we um, was sort of covered in the other video as well. And that is that and a lot of people don't necessarily know this, but obviously moderators, they, they say that sometimes they gift moderators the collectible they're allowed to, but also permanent staff 
also are allocated collectibles as well as part of their thing and they can sell them if they want to so essentially um, we know about some of them but we didn't know about all of them necessarily or if you did you know maybe I didn't know about all of them I didn't realize that major a lot of permanent staff are actually allocated collectibles as well uh, and then they can then go and sell them on the market so I think this is probably what's happening here and I think what this is is this is this is probably one staff member who is allocated collectibles but what they can probably do is when VV takes their batch away, which is which is random, isn't it? They take the first uh, 40, and then after that, there's a random 80, I believe, if I remember correctly. But I can't remember exactly how many there are. But basically, they take off the first 40, and then there's about a random 80 that they take. Now, in that random 80, obviously, there's going to be some low mints, there's going to be some special mints, etc., etc. So I'm thinking what happens is basically they take that 80, and then this person, whoever it is, is then allowed as their collector thing to go through and choose which one they have simple as that really so therefore because you can see that even though there's quite a few special mints none of them are you know um, are repeated like he doesn't have like 666 of every single one he doesn't have 222 of every single one he doesn't have 123 and some of them are low ish but not very low and some of them are you know sort of not even anywhere near anything so I'm guessing that it just so happens that out of those 80 or 90 that they keep back, some of them are going to have some low mints and this person probably gets first dibs on what they get because they're part of the permanent team. That's what I'm thinking personally. I don't know on that one. I'm just speculating here. Uh, we do know, it's been confirmed for Vivi, that some of the permanent team do get past collectibles as their contract. It's part of their thing. It's a bit like, I suppose, when you go for a job and they say that you get allocated a certain amount of shares per month and you know you get the shares at the end and then you can just sell them off if you want to. To me, it's the same sort of thing because either way, it's coming out in the same liquidity. It's the same as the founders essentially getting tokens. Now, I know they're locked, but they're not locked forever. They're locked for a period of time. The idea of this is that you don't have, you know, all founders and everybody dumping on someone in one go because that's a scam. But in terms of, you know, staff getting collectibles as part of their their, their bonuses, I suppose it's not really a big deal, uh, especially as it's only a few here and there and it's only the permanent staff. And as we know, Vivi was running on a skeleton team at that time anyway. So and also, you know, you say to them, oh, you get this, this and this in payment and you can also get collectibles. Well, you don't know what those collectibles are worth down the line, do you? At the end of the day, they might not be worth anything. And some of these are just, you know, comics from, you know, that are, that are worth like two or three dollars at the moment. So not all of them are, you know, like massive special uh, you know, special growls or anything like that. So obviously there are going to be some growls that are obviously given out and stuff like that as well. But in this case, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of different numbers there. So uh, I don't think it's too big a deal, but, you know, let me know what you think in the comments, whether you think my theory is correct about that. Um, and the reason I say this, by the way, is, well, there's two options here, is either they are they are after the fact going through and looking at what 80 have been t taken and then taking one from there, or they've got somehow some way of manipulating it to save certain mints. But I don't think that's the case because otherwise they would just save the same mint all the time, wouldn't they? Uh, unless maybe they don't because it looks a bit weird and, and fussy, but you know, I don't know on that one. That, that, that is my theory behind it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below uh, and let me know what uh, what you think. Do you think Vivi need to come out and let everybody know what's going on about this? Do they need to be transparent about it? I don't think it's a big issue. I think it'll be swept under the rug fairly quickly and, uh, you know, I think it's all good. But, of course, people will say, oh, you know, Vivi moon boy because of the fact that, you know, and you don't want to fud. It's true. I don't want to fud Vivi. But at the same time, I don't see a problem with this specifically. I guess apart from if you are somebody who collects the 666 mint, it just means that you're not going to be able to get that 666 mint of that particular one and you would have to buy it for a premium in the market. But you would have to do that anyway if it was sent to someone else. So the chance of you who is a collector of the 666 getting that compared to, you know, and also, like I said, they're not all 666 or anything like that. So I don't think it can be construed as, um, you know, the manipulating system. But, you know, let me know in the comments what you think and uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. As always, don't take any of this as financial advice or anything like that. Uh, if you want to get yourself a VV t-shirt or anything like that, little hoodies and all that kind of stuff, uh, uh, we've got some uh, some VV merch in the uh, Omi Homies merch, and there's also some other Omi Homies there. You've got Johnny Dunn, and you've got um, who's that? Oh, VV Vault as well. Uh, so if you want to get any of their merch, then the money does go straight to them. By the way, just so you know. And so uh, if you want any VV merch, uh, then feel free to pop along there. I'll be adding some more in the next few days, uh, and it's all done through Amazon. So that way, if you don't like it, you just send it back. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't care either way. So, uh, you know, it's just a little service I provide. So if you want any of that stuff, then uh, feel free to go there. We've got some premium T-shirts in the US as well. So uh, they're pretty cool from Amazon. And they're, they're really good quality stuff, actually. Amazon do some good stuff. Um, but it's all done for Amazon. So it's all for Amazon Prime. You get it next day delivery, all that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. If it doesn't fit, send it back or whatever. You know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. Anyway, thanks very much for joining me. As always, don't forget, uh, don't take any of this as financial or investment advice in any way, shape or form crypto goes up can make you loads of money or it can go down and you can completely lose everything including your new vv t-shirt from omihomiesmerch.com but thank you very much my name's been ian from essentially crypto and i'll see you on the next video bye bye for now